Now this is my favorite moment in the life cycle of a book. It's the moment the book leaves the author's control and makes its way into readers' hands. Up until this moment, it's been a private matter between myself and my publisher, but now it's being published. It's being made public. Um, readers will find it in the library, in the bookstore, in the discount store, online, wherever books are sold. Um, if you're one of those sainted readers who pre-ordered the book, maybe it will magically appear on your e-reader at midnight or arrive by special delivery on the day of publication at your doorstep. But by whatever magic means there is, um, it has now been released into the wild. And so the story doesn't belong to me anymore. It belongs to readers. It takes on a life of its own because reading is a fundamentally creative, collaborative process. When you read a book, it becomes a part of you because you bring your own unique experiences and perspectives to the story. And the story plays out differently in your mind than it does in the mind of anybody else who reads the book. So one of my favorite things about book club meetings is that we get to see this phenomenon in action. We discover that every reader reads a different book. Some of you will read Sugar and Salt and oh my gosh, I hope you read it. Um, you'll read a woman's coming of age journey through key moments in her life. Um, someone else will read the same book and it will be a love story. And another um, member of your club might see a story of trauma and recovery. Some of you will read a heartfelt interracial romance. Others might be intrigued by the story within a story about a forbidden love that happened back in the late 1960s. Um, and I bet a lot of readers will flip straight to the recipes in the back and get cooking because sugar and salt is fundamentally about making people happy with tasty food. So it sounds like there's something for everyone in this book. Um, it's a good choice for a book club discussion because it's multifaceted in that way. When my editor created the reading group guide, it turned out like twice as long as most reading group guides. Um, and I think that's because there's so much to process in this novel. Um, I'm not sure I should say this, but I'll say it because it's true. Um, the events in this book are even more relative um, to today's world than even when I began writing it a couple years ago. The drama that Margo faces in Sugar and Salt involves issues such as body autonomy, um, freedom of choice, justice inequities, racial matters, diversity in families, um, also cocktails, snacks, and dessert, but those aren't controversial. Um, we read to escape the grim news of the day, but we also read to frame the things in the world around us and to make sense of it. Um, that's one of the reasons that I wrote Sugar and Salt, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Um, so I hope that you will give Sugar and Salt your consideration for your book club, and I would love to hear what kind of discussions evolve from reading the book.